What you see may change your perception of any sporting event. Get this, shoot this. Welcome to Outside the Lines. I'm Ryan Smith. We've got a preview of one of the biggest upsets in sports history coming up the very moment when it all went down. But first, our big story. What's going down in Chicago with the hapless Bulls? They're a long way away from the days of Jordan and Pippen and six world championships in eight years. But until last week, no one knew that they were this far from that and this dysfunctional. After Fred Hoiberg was canned for coaching a team lacking, quote, spirit, according to management, enter new head coach Jim Boylan, preaching a harder working team. His new approach, including two and a half hour practices with wind sprints and military style push ups, not going over well with the players. They reached out to the Players Association, complaining of what they called extreme tactics of their new head coach. And then the bottom fell out, a 56-point drubbing at the hands of the Celtics Saturday night, after which the team reportedly considered boycotting practice the next day. A players-only meeting, then a meeting with Boylan followed, and later Boylan said this about his players' complaints. It's great. They have every right to do that. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not taking it personally. I'm not like, oh, you can't call. They can call. They can call. I know the rules. You know, I know what the rules are. Uh, so, yeah, no problem. Uh, but it doesn't deter from that. We're going to work and we're going to practice. Last night's game wasn't nearly as bad, but it wasn't good either. A season-high 27 turnovers and a loss to the Kings, their 13th loss in their last 15. And worse yet, even the Kings are making fun of them. One reportedly yelling after the game, uh-oh, another two-and-a-half-hour practice for them tomorrow. You know it's bad when the Kings are making fun of you. Let's bring in ESPN NBA reporter Malika Andrews. She is in Chicago joining us with more on the hoop trouble in Chicago. All right, so Malika, what's the latest with what's going on there? Well, the Bulls are in practice as we speak. Like you said, last night they suffered a 14-point loss to Sacramento. Or, excuse me, they suffered a 19-point loss to Sacramento after being up by 14. And Jim said afterwards, you know, we need to get back to practice. So that's where they are now. I don't know if they're running wind sprints, <laughs> but they are back in the gym. And Malika, you just had some new reporting along with Ramona Shelburne earlier. You mentioned, uh, this is something that came out, as you said. You, you said a leadership committee was discussed but that Bulls management had empowered Boylan to have a firm hand. Then Levine Absolutely. is quoted as saying, this is a business, it's not a dictatorship. Those, to me, seem like mixed messages if I've ever seen them. Yeah, so like we reported this morning, after players met, Levine went to Boylan and said, you know, I feel like we need to clear the air here. Levine didn't categorize it as apology, but he said that we do need to have this discussion. And Boylan really isn't backing down because this is the mandate that he has from management because they want a tougher coach. They want the antithesis to Fred Horberg. But uh, it's interesting because what's your sense of what the players will think if even if they have this leadership committee, they've got a coach who says, hey, look, we're going to practice. We're going to put in the work that I say, I know the rules, and that's what needs to happen to win. It's mixed. You know, I've been told by some players that this tough style is a coaching style that they can respond to. Other players, more veteran players, say, you know, this really isn't the way of the league anymore. Um, Boylan has cited Popovich a couple of times as this is a way that he coaches and he's trying to kind of implement that. Mm. But this is a different league. This is a different time. And players have much more control than they used to. Now, they've got the worst record in the East. When they do win, they seem to kind of squeak by. Four of their six wins are by two points or less. There is a sentiment out there that's kind of like, look, you guys aren't doing well. What's right. wrong with a little bit of hard practice, man? Maybe that's what you need. What, do the players give you a sense of what they think about the impression of them externally? There's a balance there, right? Mm. I mean, you need hard practices when you are not showing up, but at the same time, you need to be able to have your legs. And Boylan is saying, look, leave it up to me. I am going to manage your legs. You guys are going to need to learn to trust me. But right now, that trust is still building, and it needs to continue to build in order for Boylan to be working them this hard. You know, the outside perception around the league is there are some questions. Is this going to work? Will this be able to attract free agents when you have a coach that is coaching like this? Um, but for the most part, players, you know, they're still showing up. They haven't boycotted practice. 
and they're going to continue to do so. Yeah, you know it's bad when the good thing is they're still showing up, they haven't boycotted, but you make a great point there. So they're headed off to Mexico City soon right. to play Orlando. Uh, did the players have a sense of what that might do for this team and what's been going on recently? Yeah, Chris Dunn said yesterday that he thinks that road trips always bring guys together. And this road trip, which is going farther, will also do that. So they're kind of hoping that after this trip, uh, this will kind of start to blow over a little bit. And they're going to be able to unite and then hopefully turn out some wins. So how do you think this ends up, Malika? You know, I think Boylan is probably going to have to give a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this is a mandate that he has from management right now, but there's going to need to be some push-pull if players continue to not respond and continue to say, look, we're going to need a little bit of love to come with the toughness. And so if he doesn't give a little bit, management's going to need to take a look at whether or not this is a coach that they can continue to move forward with, which they've said, you know, this is going to be our coach headed into next season, but he's going to have to learn and evolve in order for that to happen. You know, I bet coaches hear that and they cringe a little bit, but you make a great point. Point. The NBA is different now, and players, they have more of a say than they did in years past. Malika, so great to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Ryan. The NFL is once again facing questions over its handling of domestic violence issues. First came the saga surrounding Reuben Foster, the Redskins choosing to sign the embattled linebacker three days after a domestic violence arrest. A Redskins team spokesman admitted the club neither contacted police about that arrest nor a previous domestic violence arrest nine months earlier. Then just three days after Foster's signing, this video surfaced of Kareem Hunt shoving and kicking a woman. A Kansas City Chiefs source told ESPN the NFL asked them to stand down from investigating the incident while the league was pursuing it. And while they attempted to obtain the video and talk to the victim in the incident to no avail, criticism is mounting for not getting that tape before TMZ and for failing to talk to Hunt, according to the player. And now concern over the league's and their team's handling of these issues is reaching Congress. Senator Richard Blumenthal sending this letter to Roger Goodell saying the cases raise questions as to whether the NFL is truly committed to addressing the scourge of domestic violence and whether the NFL and team owners have the effective leadership necessary to make much needed change. And we're pleased to be joined now by Senator Richard Blumenthal of the great state of Connecticut. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good to be with you. Now, Senator, we reached out to the NFL for a comment on your letter, asked them if they wanted to respond. They said nothing new to add right now. Uh, what do you want to see the NFL do differently? What really is necessary for the NFL to do is to investigate effectively and discipline adequately, to send a message not only to players but also to fans that it will not condone a culture of domestic violence or sexual assault. That's what the apparent signal is from its treatment of recent cases. For example, Kareem Hunt and Reuben Foster. It shouldn't take a graphic, gruesome video, as it did in the case of Kareem Hunt, for there to be effective discipline. And with Reuben Foster, he was picked up after he was released by the San Francisco 49ers, by the Redskins. Why is that justifiable? There are now some six to nine players drafted in the last couple of years after serious incidents of domestic violence or sexual violence by NFL teams. So there is a pattern here that needs to be corrected through an independent investigatory body. So, Senator, let me ask you, you have been taking the NFL to task since the days of the Ray Rice incident. You wrote them a letter back then talking about their handling of these cases. How would you grade how the NFL is handling domestic violence cases since that time? I'd give it a D, not quite an F, because it has adopted supposedly a zero tolerance policy. It has taken some action in some cases, but they are isolated, far and few between. And what's really necessary is a consistent, proactive, aggressive policy. For example, in the Kareem Hunt case, formally asking for the police file, a really effective investigation. They have a public trust. Their players are role models. And they have a responsibility to their fans who ultimately should be a force for more effective action as well. 
You mentioned in your letter as well that there is a question as to whether or not the NFL and team owners have the leadership necessary to make much needed change. Does a change need to happen in leadership in the NFL? And if so, in what way? I think the leadership change has to be a resolve, mm. a clear determination that domestic violence and sexual assault simply will not be tolerated, that there will be in action as well as in words a zero tolerance policy. And that public trust that the NFL enjoys is written into the statutes in an antitrust exemption. I proposed a measure called the Sports Act that would sunset that exemption. Okay. The NFL and other bodies are unique in that kind of exemption. So if they're not moving to make significant changes in the area of handling domestic violence cases, you'll move to possibly question the application of that antitrust exemption continues to the NFL? If, if they fail to uphold their social responsibility, then the antitrust exemption perhaps should not be renewed. It would be sunsetted, it would be renewed every five years instead of being enjoyed on a permanent basis. And that's the effect and goal of the Sports Act, to make sure that their social responsibility is enforced. All right, Senator, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. What was going through Buster Douglas's mind when he delivered that knockout blow to Mike Tyson? You'll hear coming up.